Hi everybody, thanks for watching. This video today, I'm gonna to be talking about my dog, Muffin, who just turned 14. She's gonna be 15 in October. And Muffin has a heart disease and most King Charles Cavalier, her type of breed, have some type of heart disease in their lifetime. And for me, I always thought that Muffin was not gonna be one of those because I made sure that I gave her a really good diet. And I learned a lot over the years because I had a Yorkie before I had Muffin who passed away at 15, but he had two surgeries. He always had like uh, urine stones, like they were like kidney stones. And I learned a lot about dog health through those surgeries and what was happening to my dog until I made an appointment with a homeopathic veterinarian that saved me so much trouble and my dog got healed of all of the problems that he had, my dog Benji. And he, what he told me was very simple. He said, stop giving your dog dog food. Stop giving him food from the house. Give him raw food, some vegetables in the food, and you can give him some brown rice, you know, things like that. And you will see that he will get better. And sure enough, the dog, no more medication, no more specialty kibble the dog did well so when i purchased my dog muffin later on i decided that i was going to raise my dog with the same type of diet it was going to be raw meat and i was really careful always with her food and evidently you know this breed does happen but i'm going to say that i'm pretty thankful that she's a 14 going on 15 and she's still here with me and I'm going to share with you today some of the things that I've done in order to help her with this problem that I really do believe, not just her, the medication the doctor gives her helps her, but I really do believe that a lot of the herbal supplements that I'm giving her from my own research, they're working really well for her. So stay tuned. We're going to get into it today. Raw food is essential for your dog, and that's what I give my dog. I give her raw chicken. Sometimes I'll give her beef. In the past, when she was able to handle organ meat, I would give her liver, I would give her chicken hearts. But lately, I noticed those things are very heavy for her. She had some, some severe diarrhea during um, Thanksgiving. I gave her the gizzards and the liver from the turkey, and she didn't. She had severe diarrhea after that. So I, I know she's she's getting too old to di to digest things like that. So now I'm really cautious with her digestion, but I still continue to give her raw. Another problem is when you're giving animals kibble, it's like it's flour. It's made from flour. So when you're giving them that, it kind of like sticks to their tooth and then they have problems with that. And a lot of the part problems that we see on our animals is because of their teeth are rotting. And this also creates problems in the heart. And Muffin does have problems with her teeth. And this only happened when I started to travel in my RV because I always gave her raw food. But when I was traveling out West, uh, this was around 2019 and even before that, I was getting lazy and I was giving her kibble with the raw food. And because, you know, I had to make brown rice and I had to bring vegetables and it's so much preparing to do with that. So I started giving kibble and I really believe that her, the reason that her teeth got bad so quickly was because she was eating the kibble. Now, she still eats kibble to this day, but I make sure that her kibble is very, very wet to the point that it's soft. So when she eats it, it goes down and it's not sitting there in her teeth waiting to be dissolved. First, let's talk about the medication that Muffin is on. Muffin has an enlarged heart. She builds up uh, fluid in her heart and she's got to take a diuretic every day so that the fluid can come out. So she takes furosemide every day. For her size, she's about a 20 pound dog, she takes 20 milligrams. And that's what she takes in the morning. I give it to her because if you give her, if you give your dog that at night, you will not be sleeping. Trust me, I went through that for a month and I couldn't even sleep because she was constantly going to the bathroom. So give it to her early in the morning. She's also on Vedmedin, which is another medication, but it's very expensive. So she's supposed to be taking two a day, but the problem with Vedmedin is that for, for Muffin at least, she started to deteriorate in her hind legs or she couldn't support herself well. She starts to lose 
the strength in her back and her hind legs. And my doctor had told me that that's one of the symptoms. So what I do is I only give her one. When she wakes up in the morning, about 5.30, 6.30, depending on her time to take it, I give her the Venmedin. But then I don't give her any more during the day. So she gets that. She is also on Enapril. And Enapril, she's on that. Enapril is for her heart. So Enapril, I don't give her one. I'm supposed to give her two pills a day that last for 12 hours, but I don't do that. I cut the pill in half and every six hours I give her the medication. And I really do believe that this has helped her a lot better because there's no like, I was thinking to myself, okay, you have a medication supposed to last in your system 12 hours. Like you get this high dose that comes into your body. And then throughout the day, like, this is like, what is the, how is this time released into your body? And I noticed that it was not lasting long enough for her. She would have, to, I would have to overlap the next medication. So when I started doing that and taking her medication and giving it to her every six hours, instead of giving her one full medication for 12 hours, she really stabilized with that. And I could do that because I'm home with her. So um, that was one of the things that I noticed that really helped a lot, really stabilized her, was giving her the medication in six hour intervals. So she is gonna need this medication for lifetime. And I'm fine with it because the Enapril, the Furosemide are not very expensive. The vitamin, the Vedmedin is super, super expensive. But the doctor that I went to, and I, and I do believe that this has saved Muffin's life because I've noticed, I tried taking her off of it and substituting with the Enapril because my doctor, my veterinarian has said, you know, you could do that. But she really recommended she take the Vedmedin. And I noticed that when I took her off of the Vedmedin for a month, she really did not do well. That's when I decided to bring her back to the VidMed and, and at least give her one a day. So that means one bottle. It's, they're like 75 bucks for one bottle. One bottle takes me two months because I'm giving to her one pill a day versus two pills a day. The other thing that I'm giving Muffin is with her food, I give her the raw chicken. And sometimes when I make brown rice, I will give her brown rice. Now, when I give her the kibble, I also put vegetables. So if I'm making broccoli, I give her broccoli, cooked broccoli, uh, carrots. I give her sometimes apple. I give her a lot of apples. She likes those cabbage. I'll give her kale. I'll give her these things. I'll chop it up and I'll put it in her food. But when I, when I make her food, I'll put the kibble in there and I will I'll put nettle tea in there. Now the nettle I buy in the bulk store in the health food store and then I make a tea and I keep it for like it lasts me like a week in the refrigerator I you know I, I, I make it and I put it in a glass jar and it keeps for like a week so I give her a little bit of that every single day I pour it into her kibble and I make sure that the kibble gets wet I also give her dandelion now I was giving her a dandelion uh, tincture but they're very expensive so now I buy her the actual dent dandelion from the health food store and I make a tea from that and I also put it in and that's really helping really well too when I put the dandelion in there as well. This year hopefully in April when the dandelions come in here on my property we get lots of dandelions here. I am re ready to prepare to get those dandelions so I can make tinctures for her so I am planning that in my calendar for this year. So those are the two that I'm giving her. Now, the other one that I give her is Hawthorne. Hawthorne is very good for the heart. And I give her that in a powder form. And I'll link down below the one that I give her. My There's another one that the vet had given me, which is cardiac support. But I don't feel that that did as well as the Hawthorne that I researched for myself. And it's working really great. And it's a great price. And there's lots of this. So I give her one in her meals. I put that in there as well. Now, I also give her every once in a while, I'll give her like brewer's yeast. I've been giving her that since she was little. And Muffin has never had a problem with fleas. It doesn't get rid of the fleas. It's like something that builds up in their system over time, the brewer's yeast. And I've done videos of this way in, my, in the beginning of my channel. But I continue to give her brewer's yeast that particular brand that I give her, the one that I mentioned in the video, it's in my favorites, by the way. And I also give Missy, my cat, I give her brewers yeast. I said, well, I just put a little bit in their food and mix it in. I don't give it to them every day because some days I will give them diamaceous earth and that's only so they don't get any parasites or heartworms or things like that. I just have one in like a spice bottle because I buy the 40 pound bag so that I can put around the chicken coop. 
but I've been now putting that in their food as well so they don't pick up any parasites or anything like that because I'm afraid Muffin can get a parasite and that's going to be detrimental to her heart. So I give her that every once in a, once a week. I give her that once or twice a week. I also will give her once time a week. I will also give her fish oil from a capsule. Make sure that gets into her system as well. These are the supplements that I give her in her feed. So if one day I give her brewer's yeast, the next day I'll give her fish oil. And then the next day I'll give her a diamaceous earth. And then I also have bone meal that I've been giving them. At least when she was little and she was growing, I gave her bone meal in her meal. I don't give her as much now, but I still continue to put it in once a week in her food. So the nettle, the hawthorn, and the dandelion is what's been amazing to give her to her food. And you're just going to put a little bit, not a lot, maybe that much from the jar in their food, wet the kibble so the kibble is nice and wet. It's pretty pretty wet and soggy. It's, it doesn't That way it doesn't sit in her teeth. Because Puffin is taking a diuretic, I'm also consistent of her need to go pee. When your dogs are older, it's hard for them to get up, especially on cold days. They might have arthritis and Sometimes she'll just like, she'll be so asleep, she'll pee on herself. I have my watch set for every 45 minutes, I'll, especially if she just took the diuretic, I'm constantly taking her out. I know by now what time of the day she has to go and how much she has to go. In the morning, she goes a lot. Again, I have, a, I have my time, I use my phone, my watch for the timer so I can set timers and take her out during the day. Because if not, I'll forget, I got the chickens, I got all of the stuff going on here. So I gotta set timers to remind me to take her out because she does have to pee because she's taking the diuretic and that's really important. Another thing is important, if you are giving diuretics and your dog has severe diarrhea like Muffin had in th during Thanksgiving, I do not give her that, you ask your veterinarian, but I decided not to give her the diuretic for a couple of days only because um, she had really wet stool and I did not give her the diuretic because I knew she was already had so much liquid coming out of her that I did not want her to be dehydrated. So what I did for her, and this is what I've been doing for a long time, everybody that comes to my house, if they have a problem with their dog, I have collodial silver and I buy this stuff, the big size, and I use it for everything from, if you have a like for my eye, Missy had a problem with her eye. I gave her that. Um, Muffin has mucusy type of diarrhea. I know it's kind of like infection, something infected in her. I give her collodial silver. Do your own research, but to me, collodial silver for all my pets have worked wonders in the ear, in the eye, whatever it is, collodial silver. Make sure you get the best one. And I've been buying this for years and it works great. I even take it myself when I have a problem when I've had problems with my eyes or ears or whatever it is, I've also taken collodial silver and it's been great. When you're dealing with an older dog is sometimes they're not going to be able to get up on the couch. What I do is I have for her little beds now all over the house where she can lay wherever she is. She can lay there. And when I'm on the couch, I have to help her get up now because she's getting older and I've seen her fall and I can't believe she hasn't hurt herself yet, but she does fall. Another thing is because she's on a diuretic, I have to have water bowls for her all over the house. So I have one in my office. I have one. I have one in my bedroom near her bed. I have one in the living room because as they get older, it's that's her walking over here. As they get older, it's harder for her to walk. Another thing, if you hear that tapping is because I purposely leave her nails long, long enough that they just tap the floor. And that's because I want to be consistent of every time that she gets up, what she's doing and I can watch for her. Because now I have to be more watchful of her as I'm her caregiver now. So that's why I want to know when she gets up, when she's going, she might want to try to get on the couch. So I want to be consistent with watching her to make sure she doesn't jump on the couch and hurt herself. She wants to sit up there. I'll come up and I'll put her up there. So that's why I let her nails a little bit longer. Near her water bowl at night where she sleeps, I have a night light there for her. And that is one of those solar Dollar Tree night lights. And that is because I can put that near her bowl because I don't have an electrical connection for another type of night light there where her bowl is. So having one of those has been great because she is not seeing as well and she doesn't hear very well. So having the light there is able to see. In the hallway, there is an outlet. And now I turn on that night light for her because if she wants to walk, 
to the bathroom where I have her pee pee pad. I have a pee pee pad in my bathroom. I only put it there at night just in case I don't hear her and she needs to go. She can go to the bathroom and do it there. Muffin has been really good. She's always a good dog. She always lets me know. She'll walk around the room a couple of times until I wake up, which is great. But there are days that maybe I have slept too much. So she will go in there and she will pee in there. So I have a night light in there for her. I also have a night light in my bathroom. So when she goes in there, she can see because she's not seeing too well because of her cataracts. Muffin used to sleep on the bed with me all the way till she had the heart problem. Once she had the heart problem, she did not want to sleep with me on the bed anymore. She drinks a lot of water during the night too. So she gets up and wants to drink water. So she can't jump off the bed. My bed is pretty high. So what she decides, she, she chose this for herself. She sleeps on the floor. That's why she has a bed near my bed. And now Missy's the one that sleeps with me. But she also many times will come out of her little bed and she will sprawl on the floor. She likes her chest to be cold on the floor many times. So she just finds comfort in that. Sometimes she'll even go to my bathroom and lay in the bathroom because the tile floor is colder in there. And she just likes that. So I've made peace with the fact that she doesn't sleep with me anymore. But when I'm sitting on my couch, she's always there sitting next to me because she doesn't spend time with me anymore in my bed. So that's been something that I've had to adapt to now with her where she is sleeps on the floor. But that's why her water bowl is near her with a night light so that she can get to it easily during the night. I take her baths during the the days that are warmer like right now we're in florida and it's cold we've had some freezes here so it's it's i look at the calendar and i look at the weather and i say okay i can't take her a, a bath this week but i can do it so i take her a bath once a month because she doesn't really do anything she just lays in the house she doesn't get dirty and I, can't, I pencil it into my calendar, but if that day is going to be in the 30s or the 40s, I want to make sure the house is warm to take her a bath. I usually wait till like 1 in the afternoon to take her a bath when it's kind of warmed up around here. They do get chilled when they're older, and you can see that it, it affects them more, the cold, the cold uh, temperature. Even though she does like the cold temperature, but when you're taking them a bath, that's not something that they really like a lot. So... You know, you can blow dry them, but I just prefer to do it when it's a warmer day and she can feel a little bit better and not get that chill from, from being in a, a cold environment. Sometimes when I feed Muffin now, she's older and she, like I said, she's starting to lose strength in her hind legs. And many times she wants to eat, but she goes and she lays on her bed. And now she's become a habit, a routine, you can say, where I have to come and I have to hand feed her. So what I do is I take an all lid from like a yogurt cup, you know, just a lid, it's plastic. And then I take a spoon and I, I hand feed her the food sitting on the floor with her. Many times she'll just leave it there. Many times she won't eat it because if it's the chicken is cold because it's raw, She'll wait an hour before she'll eat it. And then I'll know to come and give it to her because it's already room temperature and she'll eat it. She doesn't like to eat it when it's too cold. But this is a new routine now where I have to actually hand feed her. I think she also enjoys it because she spends so much time by herself on the floor at night. She likes that uh, connection with me during the night where I get to feed her. And I, I'm grateful to do it. I'm very happy to baby her because this could be my last year with her so i'm just happy to do it so as far as travel is concerned muffin has been the most amazing dog of my life for travel now she is the only dog that i really traveled with i had my little yorkie my little dorky was all over the place in the car but this dog she is definitely a lap dog she sits so well in the car for traveling it's amazing i I don't know how I can replace something like that. She's been the most wonderful dog for travel, but I will tell you this. By last time that I went traveling, I noticed that she was not doing too well. Number one, she doesn't want to sleep up in the loft anymore in my camper. So I noticed that now she wants to sleep on the floor at the bottom and she likes routine. She has her places. She has her water bowl. She's not doing too great for travel. And that's one of the reasons that I decided not to travel, not just because of COVID and all of those things that are keeping me here and the expenses of, of traveling. And the reason that I want to stay here on my home set and finish a lot of projects that I never got to do because I've been traveling and put my money into that versus traveling. But also it's because the last few years with Muffin, I noticed that 
she doesn't really want to go out. She likes to stay home. She likes to be here. She likes to be here with me. And she likes the routines and the customs and the habits that we have here in the house. She has her little places. She's very happy to do and to be there in those places. And I'm happy to be here with her right now. And eventually when she passes on, she will be buried here on the property. And um, that will be a sad day for me. But at least I know that I've given her the last few years of her life. I've given her peace. And that's what's really important for me to give her good health, good, to give her good health, to give her peace, to give her all the love that she needs and to be with her during whatever time that she needs in her life. So with that said, I thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you have a King Charles Cavalier, know that you're not going to avoid the heart condition. This is something that's within the breed. And you could take preventive measures to avoid that. Talk to your doctor about that. There are vitamins and you can give them like a CoQ10 and there's herbs and supplements that you can give them for that before it actually gets bad. So if you have any questions in the comments, I can only answer you from my experience, what I'm doing for my dog, but I do say I'm not a veterinarian. And I'm not equipped to give you advice on medications or anything like that. But I will tell you that you should go and check with your veterinarian and ask him. All I can do is tell you what works for me, what's worked for my dog. And how happy that I am that I have done my research and I have been able to help my dog have a comfortable submission into this heart problem that is so prevalent in the breed and be able to submit to it and do all that we can to lessen the load on her so that she can live a happy, healthy life during this time that she has this disease. So I thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or you got a lot of information out of it, please give it a thumbs up. I'd be glad to answer every, any of your questions down below. Have a wonderful day. God bless. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.